Hello everyone and welcome back to our week of love where we are playing our life beginnings and always and this is a simulation game that is a free game on Steam so if you're in the mood for something like this go check it out it's free it's rated overwhelmingly positive with thousands of reviews so let's get started Okay, so we're on our character creation screen. Let's look at the different options. Oval, peach, square. Let's go with oval. And we'll do... Uh, we'll do peachy. As for the eyes... Let's see here. Got it few different options. Let's go with the round one with the eyelashes and we'll do oh lots of different eye color options. We'll do green. Yeah we'll do green. And as for the hair. Okay so there's a front and there's a back part of the hair. Okay I see. Ooh, I kind of like that actually. That's cute. Should we do pink or should we do red? Red looks like Merida to me. I think white is also pretty cool. Let's do pink, why not, you know? And then we will do Aster, first name. Oh, if I can spell. Alder, she. I doubt they have the voice name for that. Let's see. Nope. Okay. That's okay. I figured as such. Um, all right. So let's go on. Let's look at the different birthmarks. I didn't see where this one popped up. Maybe it's somewhere you can't see. Scars. Oh, I do like the rosy cheeks. That's cute. The freckles are cute too. I'll do freckles like that. Hand size. Um, I guess medium. And glasses. Um. I kind of like the round ones. I think. All the glasses are pretty small on our face. We'll do the round ones. Okay. Um, there's birthmarks on the body, scars on the body. We'll do freckles on the arms. And clothing type. Uh, we like all of them. Accessory type. Sure, why not? Uh, I'm not sure if this is just going to... No, I don't think it'll just give us everything. I'm not sure where this plays into. Um, okay, done. Summer in Sunset Bird was a special time of year. Your usually sleepy town began to bustle. It was a popular tourist destination with people coming from all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air, bringing three whole months of schoolless vacation with it. First of all, this area looks so pretty. These are really cool looking buildings, and summer vacation was one of my favorite times of the year as a kid. During the summer, your moms didn't like you to wander too far outside of your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. That included the people. Families came and went from Sunset Bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing their stores. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved or asked how your family was, or most often just said hello. Let's see, you didn't really get why they always had to say hi, they saw you every day. You ended up saying hi to a lot of different people since most of the tourists that came and went every summer were the same ones. We were too anxious to say hi back to most of the other residents that greeted you, but they all knew you well enough to expect that. 
This sounds the most like me as a kid, so we'll do this one. They still smiled at you anyway, and that made you feel a little more comfortable. But today, there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house. He was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wondered if he was even a real person or a statue that had magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever or whatever he was, you had never seen him before. One thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that people who you didn't recognize really, really stood out. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district, as your moms called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger was set off a lot of red flags. Your moms had a talk with you and your big sister, Lizzie, about this kind of situation before. See, you hadn't exactly been listening. They mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to. You remember that it's okay to run away if you feel uncomfortable. I think that this one's probably the most accurate. You remember that it's okay to run away if you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to worry about being polite then. Stranger danger. You weren't sure about this man yet. Still, you felt a bit scared knowing that he was blocking the way to your front door. But you were pretty interested. You wanted to know. Whether he was nice or not, you didn't want to be bothered. Um, We'll say but you were pretty interested. You wanted to know more about what was going on. You slowed down, your eyes remaining fixed on the man. There was a split second where your eyes met and you knew he was aware he wasn't alone on the street anymore. Hey! You raised your eyebrows at the shout. Did he want something? Is that why he was here? The man stood up and started to make his way toward you. Not wanting to seem too approachable, you folded your arms. Still unsure about him, but willing to be friendly, you offered the stranger a smile. Your whole body was frozen in place as he approached. Um, let's go with... Um... Not wanting to seem too approachable, you folded your arms and stared. So... Do you live around here? What's your name? You looked the man up and down, taking in his tanned skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed. The way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and a stingray tattoo, and you wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. While you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting for an answer to his question. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll just say, yeah, I live here. That's great! He looked happy to hear it, giving you a broad smile. And money. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Well... Could you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry, I should have... Well, let me start over. He cleared his throat and stood up straighter. From where you were standing, it just made him look creepier. <laughs> hmm. I have a son. His name is Cove, who's about your age. Cove, that seemed like a strange name for an actual living person to you. You chewed on the inside of your cheek. This guy was definitely obsessed with water. You thought that was pretty cool. I mean, Cove is actually a pretty cool name. We'll go with, you thought that was pretty cool. You've never met anyone with that name. We moved in across the street, see? He gestured toward the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. You must be Aster Alda, right? I met your moms earlier and they told me you were eight, just like him, so... He shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention, a hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? Just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid. You'll like him. Do you mind? But you gotta keep it a secret too, okay? It wouldn't be very friendly to say his dad sent you. Uh, you eyed the man. You felt kind of sorry for Cove. Did other kids really get their parents to pay for friendships? We're going to ask that because, I mean, that's a fair question. Had your moms done that for you and Lizzie? The thought made you frown. What do you say? Want to make a deal? We can't be bought. You didn't want the money. No, thank you. Sorry. He deflated enough to notice, but not completely. Are, Are you, you sure? 
I talked over him. I didn't. So he it looks like he voices some things, but not everything. It won't be so bad, even if it's just for the summer. That'd be enough. That only made this sound more strange to you. Why does it lasting for the summer matter? When it was clear his initial strategy wasn't going to fly, he tucked the bill into a back pocket and changed the request. I get it. You don't have to. Would you be comfortable with he and I coming by for a normal visit? No money involved. Yeah, I want to meet him. Okay, you can do that. I guess. You have to ask my mom's. You didn't answer the man. Um, let's say, okay, you can do that. His smile got bigger again. His eyes crinkled at the sides. I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but... <laughs> Well, I don't know where he's gotten off to. He laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, you thought he actually wanted to cry. If if you see him, can you tell him to come on home? He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. Sure thing. This definitely wasn't the normal way kids made friends. You knew that, but you were still going to help. The man smiled and reached out to pat you on the head, paused before doing so, then pulled his hand away instead. Your moms are already checking around for me. Such a thoughtful group you are. Now I better go look too. Can't put everyone else to work while I keep sitting here. <sighs> I thought he might come back and... That's not what's important. I have to go. Thanks again, Aster. So much. He jogged off down the street without another word. You decided to check the hills behind your house. Step one. First sight. The chirping of crickets in the tall grass greeted you, quiet and familiar. From the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls squawking as they settled down for the night. Okay, so you always loved the ocean. You loved to hear stories about the sea. You didn't enjoy the beach all that much, especially the sand, which got absolutely everywhere. Okay, um, this looks really beautiful, but this is me as a kid and I mean honestly now you didn't enjoy the beach all that much especially the sand which got absolutely everywhere you really couldn't understand why so many people came all the way from where they really lived just to visit the ocean you took in a deep breath you wanted to try to relax and couldn't you weren't sure what but something told you that you weren't alone so you glanced around there was a boy sitting at the top of one hill almost completely hidden within the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, probably just that he wasn't paying attention, he hadn't noticed you yet. You watched him a minute longer, feeling a little bit like you'd found a deer in the wild. Though deer didn't have. Um, we'll say green hair. But this new boy did. You watched as it fluttered softly around his face in the breeze. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, then another. And then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stopped, raising a hand to acknowledge him and show you weren't scary. <laughs> Hi, space cadet. Hi. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands balling into fists at his sides. He didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees soaking the hem of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You obviously caught him off guard. His pink cast seemed to glow in the twilight, though when he caught you staring at it, he hid his arm behind his back. Something the man earlier had said stuck out to you. Cove? Ah. Eyes wide, he studied you. How'd you know that? Uh, we'll say, I met your dad. Oh. So, is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of grass surrounding you, his face falling at the prospect. I can leave if it is. Uh, we'll say, you can't own a hill. Why not? How could you? You just do. I had a hill back home. Well, this still isn't mine. Oh. He sat back down with a thump, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat on the patch of grass next to him. 
The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers, too. The night wind was cool as it traveled over the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. Why'd your family move? A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as you asked the question. Almost like they'd never stop, his tears started up again with a vengeance. My parents. They don't want to live together with me anymore. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheeks, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave, and he took me with him, and now we have a house here, and I want to go home. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heavy with exhaustion. He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping out his eyes at the back of his hand before he put them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. I want my mom. We'll say, I'm sorry. He slipped his hands underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Cove wound himself up again for another long crying fit. You felt bad for him, being forced to come here with no choice. You couldn't imagine what it would feel like to live with only one of your moms, but it must be pretty hard. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Aster! Cove? Kids, where'd you go? Cove looked at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I want to go home. I don't want to go back to that house. I want to go home. Let's see. We'll say, it'll be okay. You were struck by a sudden need to reassure Cove. It, it's not gonna all be fun, but isn't he your family too? Yeah, I guess. Then you can count on him when you really, really need him. You shot him a grin and pushed yourself to your feet. Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad's voice rang out again. Cove, can you hear me? He looked toward the sound of his dad's voice, silent, then turned away while rubbing his not-bandaged arm. Sorry. I still don't want to go. Um, we'll say... You waited silently with him. Yeah, I get it. You do? Before you could answer, you heard Cove's dad even closer than before. There you are, bud. The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all their eyes landed on you and they rushed over. Both of your moms were at your side in a split second, faces filled with worry. Aster, you're here after all. We had been at the park to check for Cove and then heard what happened earlier when you met the new neighbor. I thought you might have gone off further away. Um, we'll say, no, we were just sitting in the grass. <sighs> Thank God you're both fine. <sighs> Were you two having fun out here? You looked over at Cove, who was wiggling against his dad's tight hug and pushing at his arms. Um. <laughs> so, how about we say, yes, I like him. You nodded, smiling slightly. Finally letting go of his squirming, scowling son, Cove's dad turned to the three of you. That's a relief. Thanks very much for finding him. I really don't know this neighborhood. Good thing Aster knows this whole area so well. Absolutely. We should be getting home now. It's been a long day for us all. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. The two of them walked off into the darkness, heading toward the neighborhood. You watched Cove's bright pink cast until it disappeared. Hmm. Tell you what, we'll have a proper playdate tomorrow, okay? Your new friend's dad wanted to bring him by to see you and Lizzie. How does that sound? Uh, it sounds like words. Um, we'll say you nodded, ducking your head down. Both of your moms laughed, the sounds overlapping into a warm, familiar chorus. Mommy put her hand around your shoulder and led you towards the path. Satisfied and more than a little ready to go to bed after your long, exciting day, you followed them home. Choosing your feelings for Cove. Okay, this is how you feel towards Cove for this step. It can be changed in later steps. Okay. Um. 
How about we say our comfort level is relaxed and we are fond of him. Okay. That's okay. At the breakfast table, oh, we got an achievement, childhood friendship. At the breakfast table the next morning, you finished your food faster than usual. Your sister Lizzie had run out earlier to go play, but you'd stayed put. Today, just like your moms had promised, Cove was coming over to hang out. Excited to see your new friend again, Aster? Yeah, I am. Another achievement, relax. How sweet. I'm so happy he moved in. Okay. With that said, are you done with your breakfast? And... <laughs> um... We'll say your bowl is entirely empty, so you nodded. Mm-hmm. Good job. He should be here soon. Cleanup began, and then on cue, there was a knock. It was hesitant, like the person wasn't sure they were in the right place. Still loud, though. We need to get a more obvious doorbell. I know, I know. Aster, could you get it? Wiggling out of your chair without really pushing it back, you made your way to the door. Hey, older family, thanks for having us. Mr. Holden, as your moms have called him, and his son were here. Cove looked different in the bright lighting of your living room, and when he wasn't crying. With his dad standing in front of him and mom and mommy behind you, you and Cove looked at each other. Pleased to see your new friend again, you smiled at Cove. He smiled back with some hesitation. Okay, let's see. You twisted the threaded bracelet. You twisted the crystal bead bracelet. You twisted the flower bead bracelet, or you twisted the shell bracelet. Um, hmm. I feel like I had a lot of threaded bracelets as a kid, so we'll do that one. Let's go play in my room. Okay. Oh. Take care. Let us know if you need anything, you two. Have fun, kids. See you. You led him to your room, popping out your chest a little bit at the side of your treasures. This is a cute little room. It kind of looks like an Ikea catalog room. There were lots of stuffed animals, a cool bed, a window to look out. It was a great room. You hadn't had anyone to show it to in a while, but you were really proud of it. He leaned it a little closer to one of your drawings on the wall. I like this. Um, okay, we'll say, I drew that. Cool. You smiled at him. You were proud of that particular piece of art, and you were glad he noticed it. He turned to look around the room a little more, setting the books on your desk and the pictures on the walls. Um, we'll say you hoped he liked your room. You had to put a lot of effort into making your room as nice as it was. You hoped he didn't say anything bad about it. Then his eyes landed on the tiny box of beach things you'd collected, tucked away by your door. He took a step towards it before hesitating and pointing at it instead. What's that? A hoard of stuff I found on the beach. Oh. Do you have any driftwood in there? Dragging the box into the middle of the room, you and Cove flopped down next to it. I think so. Yeah, see? You gestured to a piece at the bottom, still covered with specks of sand. Neat. This is a good collection. You got the sense from the tone of his voice that he wasn't just saying it to be nice, or to be like Shiloh. He actually meant it. Oh right, I almost forgot. Shiloh's gonna be here today. Shiloh? Lizzie's friend. Or like, her number one fan, I guess. Mm. Do I have to see him? It should be okay. I mean, he's Lizzie's friend, not mine. But, you know. Come on, check out my shell some more. I found this one under a big piece of seaweed that had washed ashore and... You pulled out seashell after seashell, explaining where you got gotten each one and holding them up against the light. There were big ones, small ones, pink, purple, and orange. Most of them you washed off in the bathroom sink when you brought them home, cleaning off the sand. Okay, we can say over the past few years you'd even learned some of their scientific names. The collection was so huge and varied that you had a lot of funny stories, or your, vo your voice faltered a little bit, but you kept going as best as you could. Um... Let's see, the collection was so huge and varied that you had lots of funny stories to tell for all of them. Apparently fascinated, either by the stories or by the shelves themselves, Cove listened with what looked like the full force of his attention. 
like when you almost got pinched by a hermit crab while searching for shells, and after watching him scuttle back into the ocean, you found another empty shell that was almost a twin to his home. It was a new experience to be the center of such dedicated focus. But Cove hadn't been mean to you, so you didn't mind. You smiled at him every now and then while showing him your collection. Kids, come down to the living room! You could tell the idea was making him unhappy, but Mommy wasn't giving you much of a chance to hang around. Cove hadn't been like this meeting you. You guess it was because he thinks you found each other by accident, not that a parent made it happen. Mr. Holden must be right that telling Cove his dad was part of that would be a bad idea. Before you knew it, you'd both been escorted downstairs and deposited in the living room, ready for Shiloh's visit. The two of you sat side by side on the floor of your home's entryway. Um, I brought the box of shells. I want to keep looking at them. Great. Bust it open. We can keep looking while we wait for Shiloh. Cove reached in and pulled out a big orange shell. Oh. Like he hadn't spoken aloud yet, he turned to you and held it up, his eyes shining. I think this one is the best of them. Mm, we'll say you can take it, because he's obviously having a hard time. Cove looked at you in surprise, his eyes going wide. Really? Sure, you like it a lot, right? Uh-huh, but I don't want to take it from you. It's okay. You got the impression he was hesitant to accept something because he didn't know you very well. Um, we'll say you insisted. No, it's okay for you. You pushed the shell against Cove's chest, willing him to receive the present, but Cove firmly shook his head and kept his arms tightly at his sides. It was a battle you couldn't win, at least not today. Cove was your neighbor now, maybe you could give it to him another time. The two of you were still sitting on the floor looking through your collection of beach findings when the doorbell finally rang. Cove jumped, startled by the sound. Since the person hadn't knocked, he figured it was probably Shiloh. He knew where to look for that. Lizzie's friend? He nodded, but that didn't seem to make Cove feel better. It was already obvious that Cove couldn't hide his feelings well. You could tell what he was thinking right away. This isn't a good idea. You'll be alright. He's here. We can't tell him to leave. He's at our only door, and if you go upstairs, he'll find you. Cove glanced around the room, his eyes wide, and finally paused with his gaze locked into the back of the house. I can go out the window. He was already walking towards it. Scrambling to think of something to say, you stepped forward, then paused. Do you want to break your other arm? Shiloh's the least scary person alive. Cheer up, Shiloh's gonna like you. Please don't get hurt. I'll come with you. Good idea. Let's go. We'll say, do you want to break your other arm? Even I don't jump out of any of the windows here, and this is my house. The distance from the first floor living room window wasn't far, but you could tell it made Cove nervous anyway. He touched the cast on his arm. I... The wind hadn't clearly released from his sails. I don't want to break any more bones. I don't think anyone wants to. Yeah. Mm. But I don't want to see him. I don't know him. Let's encourage him. Hey, if you do have a hard time with him, I'll tell him to leave. Is that okay? Okay. Shiloh poked his head into the living room. It was impossible to know for sure if he'd heard what you'd been saying or not, but you guessed that he had. Hi! Oh, Hi, Aster! And hi, uh, Cove? Cove shot you an uneasy glance. Hi. I'm Shiloh. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. You have a lot of freckles. Uh, right. I do. What are you guys doing? We're looking at shells. Can I do it too? Cove shrugged and looked back at your box of beach findings. Hmm. What about that one? The plan for the afternoon, at least, as far as you were concerned, was to sit and look at the beach things some more. You weren't really in the mood to do much of anything else, especially if Cove was having fun. Hey, check out this scallop shell I found. Cool, right? It's a pretty color, kind of like my cast. The beautiful glittering pink did look a little bit like the wrap around his arm. Pink is a nice color. Okay. Oh? Is it your favorite? Oh, Shiloh's sweet. Cove is being a little broody. Not really. What is? Maybe green or blue? It might be yellow. Oh, those are all cool. I guess. 
Mm, we'll say. I like those colors too. Awesome. Both of them smiled. Like usual, it didn't take long for Shiloh to get fidgety. Lizzie was his favorite. Without her around, Shiloh didn't seem to know what to do with himself. And Cove wasn't like your sister. He wasn't that much like you either. Is Lizzie coming back? Don't know. Uh. Where'd she go? I think she's at the beach, probably. Is she playing at her park? Cove's eyes lit up at the mention of the park, and he looked towards you. Uh. There's a park? Yep, but it's old. Can you show me? I want to go. He started getting up before he had even answered, and Shiloh jumped up beside him in excitement. Really? You do too, right, Aster? The park is fun. Uh, we'll say the park's pretty great. Or should we say I love it? Uh, we'll say the park's pretty great. Yeah! It's right at the beach, so there's lots of fun stuff to do, and lots of sand. It has a jungle gym and a bunch of swings. That sounds like it could be cool. So, are we going to find Lizzie? I don't know. I never really wanted to see her. I just wanted to check the park out. Adrift without any direction, Shiloh finally turned to you. Okay. He perked up. Both boys wanted to go. It was only fair. After getting permission from your moms, the three of you were ready to head out. It was a short walk to the park. Lizzie had convinced your moms that it was so short she could always be allowed to walk there by herself. When he found her, she was hanging on the jungle gym, swinging back and forth. Hey, Lizzie. Her face lit up when she saw you, her big brown eyes going wide. Aster! Shiloh! Hi! She dropped to the ground and landed with a soft thud in the sand. In a split second, Shiloh had abandoned you two and scrambled over to stand by her. You were used to being left out when it was just the three of you, but now, Cove was here. You wondered if he would leave, too. Who's that? It's Cove. He's new. Hi! I remember. Hi, Cove! Welcome to my park. Nobody ever comes to play here, so this is where we get together. She gestured widely with her arms as if to present the area to the newcomer. Without interrupting Lizzie's speech, Cove whispered in your ear quiet enough that the others wouldn't overhear. I thought kids couldn't own places like parks or hills. You couldn't help but laugh a tiny bit. When Lizzie continued talking, you took the chance to kick off your shoes and wriggle your toes to the warm sand. Nice, huh? In this neighborhood, I'm the one who comes up with the ideas. You are? Uh-huh. Yeah, I am. Who else could handle the job? Lizzie is the oldest. By a lot. My mom said you're Aster's age. Yeah. Thought so. I'm still the only one in this group with double digits. What about other kids? Other kids? There aren't any. We're the only kids here and Shiloh is just visiting from another place. Not even tourists really bring their kids here. This is the land of ancients. Be careful that the oldies don't try to steal your youth. Oh. For a second, it looked like he might cry again. But something in his eyes shifted, and he looked back at Lizzie. What kind of old people? Like moms and dads or grandparents? Grandparents who don't have kids. They hate kids. <laughs> Why? We haven't done anything. We'll say only some of the- or should we- I don't know, he seems pretty upset. Uh, we'll say only some of them don't like kids. You interjected quickly, hoping Lizzie wouldn't take things too far. Cove sniffled, his forehead creasing with worry. Lizzie was staring Cove down, but Cove wasn't even looking at her anymore. He didn't seem to care that she was there. He went into his own head. Shiloh was the next one to speak, completely unaware of the situation. Um... Um, I met Lizzie and Aster in school. You'll see tons of kids there once summer's over. I don't want to go to a new school. I don't want summer to end. Shiloh looked down to the dirt. He hasn't had much luck striking up conversations with Cove. I like summer vacation a lot, too. All the building tension in the air suddenly vanished when Lizzie laughed. At Shiloh's discomfort, at how weird she thought Cove was, at something else entirely you didn't really know, but she laughed, face scrunching up. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Sunset Bird Cove. Take a seat, put up your feet, and get used to it. You offered him a small smile, and at that, at least, looked to reassure him some. For the rest of the summer, Cove was always there. You saw him more often than Shiloh, and on some days, when she was in a bad mood or busy, you even saw him more than Lizzie. He became a staple of your everyday life, the way sun and lunch in the beach were. 
During your first summer together, you really liked Cove. He was a fun person to play with, and he seemed to like playing with you too. Of course, that was only the start of things. Okay. And then summer ended. Um, so I think that these might be other moments we can do. So there's shopping, grown up, long day, sandcastle, and fireflies. So I guess we can do shopping. Come back before it gets dark, alright, sport? The familiar voice drifted across the street and drew your attention away from the snail you'd been watching inch slowly across the pavement. Cove waited in front of his dad, pushing his green hair back off his face and where the breeze was blowing over his glasses. He looked to be paying only a mild amount of attention as he was being handed a few slips of green paper. It reminded you of when you first met Mr. Holden, although he was probably not paying Cove to be friends with himself. Cove's dad seemed to feel your gaze somehow, or maybe you made a noise, because a second later, his eyes were on you. He waved you over with a smile. He looked happy to see you, but you still felt a little weird for getting caught. You've got to learn how to be more sneaky. You brushed your hands together to free them of sand, then jogged over to join the two, smiling at Cove first, and then his dad. Aster, hi. How's it going? Good to see you again. What excitement are you up for today, Aster? Taking a walk. I found a pretty cool snail across the road. There's lots of snails around here. Mr. Holden grinned at you kindly. After you finished answering the question, Mr. Holden's attention returned to Cove, who was preoccupied with folding the bills he had into a tiny rectangle. Sounds fun. You know, Cove was about to hit the stores by the beach. Why don't you go with them? You gave a ready nod, turning to squint in the direction of the stores like you could see the goods they had to offer all the way from where you stood. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. I don't mind. Great. I'm sure you guys will have loads of fun. Mr. Holden reached into his pocket and pulled out a leather wallet filled with money. You found it odd, since your mom's only ever really seemed to have cards in theirs. Here. He leaned in to pass a crisp ten to Cove, giving him a wink and a whisper. Get something for your friend, too. Sure. Good kid. Cove's dad ruffled his son's hair as he was straightening back up, the bill in his hand still held out towards the green-haired boy. Take care. Cove accepted the bill after a second and slipped it into his pocket. Then, with one last nod to his dad, he turned and started walking. He followed after him, intrigued at the possibilities this outing might bring. Cove strayed towards the gentle tide creeping up the sand and he fell into place beside him. It was a nice day, the sun was shining and there weren't many clouds in the sky, though the wind coming off the ocean kept it from being too hot. He took a deep breath, enjoying the scent of salt and ocean air. When he looked at Cove, he was dragging his feet through the sand a little and he slowed down to wait for him. His eyes searched the ground intently. Um, let's see... We'll say, what is it? Mm. Nothing. He kept staring down at the ground, though. You bit down on your lip a little, wanting to say something else, but not knowing what. The comforting sound of waves filled the silence with pleasant white noise, and you played a little game with yourself as you walked along, getting as close to the water as possible without getting wet. It resulted in you having to run up the sand quickly when a wave rushed in more than a few times, and although Cove threw a few glances your way, he didn't say a word. What did you want to go to the shops for? I need a new sand pail. Yeah? What happened to your old one? Cove narrowed his eyes, seeming to think deeply for a second. Whoa. It disappeared. What? Really? Cove ducked his head down, lacing his fingers behind his back. It didn't seem like he was going to continue, so he nudged his arm. How did that happen? Well... Cove opened his mouth and shut it again, considering. I took it to the beach one day. Uh-huh. When I got home, it wasn't anywhere. You left it there? Nope, it wasn't at the beach when I went back. Then you lost it. It disappeared. So... What about you? What do you do out here? Um, let's see... What she... How about we say, I like to build sand castles? Although we did just say we didn't like to be in the sand all that much. We'll say, I like to build sand castles. 
Last summer, Lizzie and I built one that was as tall as me, and sometimes they have sandcastle building competitions down by the boardwalk. Cool, I bet you could win. He smiled at Cove. Maybe the two of you would build one together one day. Once you reached the shopping area, the noise level grew exponentially. No longer just waves and footsteps, but the chatter of people enjoying the lovely summer day, the call of birds trying to find bits of food left behind, and lots of salespeople trying to get attention. You sniffed the air as you walked beside Cove. You could still smell the ocean, but there were other scents now, too. Pizza, pretzels, hot donuts. Um, we'll say it's nice. The energy surrounding the area seemed to fill you, and there was a bounce in your step as you began looking at all the familiar sights. There were so many things to do, you didn't know where to begin. You looked at Cove, hoping he was just as excited as you were. Cove was glancing from one side of the street to the other with a look in his aquamarine eyes that you couldn't quite work out. Um... What's that? Cove pointed to a large crowd of people gathered near a few tables with large colorful umbrellas blooming from their middles. You couldn't see past the adults who were blocking the way, but you knew there must be something worth seeing. Without another word, the two of you hurried over to see what all the commotion was about. Feast your eyes on the amazing Alexander! In the center of the crowd was a man with a tall hat and a funny green coat that had three long tails. There was a little table next to him with a cloth hanging over it that read The Amazing Alexander in glittery golden script. Why tell people his name if it's already on a sign? Cove hummed with understanding, then turned to walk away just as the Amazing Alexander began shuffling a deck of cards. Maybe we could stay and watch? Cove glanced back at the man, then he briefly lifted his arms up off his sides before returning them to place. You grinned, waving for him to follow you as you raced back to stand in the crowd. With that, it began. The magic man pulled one card out of the decks, showing it to the curious onlookers. It was a four of diamonds. Watch closely. You did, squeezing through a few of the adult onlookers to get a better view. Suddenly, the man snapped his fingers and the card just disappeared. Whoa! The amazing Alexander, who had earned his title, turned his head and looked directly at you. He reached out with a kind smile. What's this behind your ear? Uh, we'll say... nothing? It was true, you didn't keep anything there. He smelled like popcorn and candy when he stepped closer, and he wrinkled your nose in confusion as he watched him. He felt a tug, and then he pulled the four of diamonds out from behind your ear. What? He knew that it couldn't really have come from your ear, but you still didn't get how he'd done it. There was a light applause from the crowd, and the man gave a deep bow. This is for you. The magician plucked a pair of balloons from a clump of them tied down to his table. Both were in the shape of a dolphin and set up being a normal circle. And one for your friend, too. Thank you for being my assistant. Wow. Now you are really grateful he chose you. After that, he went to someone else in the crowd. Pick a card, any card. My uncle does that every time he visits, not the balloons, the stuff with cards. Cove spoke plainly while reaching over to take the dolphin that had been designated for him. We'll say, at least you had a fun time. You saw a magic trick and you got a great balloon. That was more than enough to make it worthwhile event. You thought that if you could find a card to practice with, maybe you could make it disappear too. The crowd started to clear some and you noticed to the side there was a whole rack of brightly colored kaleidoscopes on display. Um... Magic 8 balls are fun, but so are kaleidoscopes. Let's do you picked up a kaleidoscope. Ooh, these are cool. You shifted your balloon string to your other hand so that you could bring the mysterious tunnel to your eye. A whole palette of colors appeared right in front of you, spinning into all kinds of different shapes as you twisted the end of the tube. Hmm. Cove picked one up and looked through, twisting the tube at the end. After a second, he set it back on the rack, moving to the other side of the stall. He went under the awning, careful of his own floating dolphin, and he joined him. Um, let's see. We'll say, did you have places like this in your old town? Cove blinked at you for a moment, and you wondered if you shouldn't have asked. You knew how much he missed that place. Uh, not really. He nodded in understanding, looking over the stalls nearby. Aw, look at all the cute little toys. 
While Cove looked at the sand pails, you were drawn to a table with colorful keychains laid out on it. They were sewn in the shape of sea creatures, and there was a plaque that read, Handmade, standing proudly in front. There were a lot of different types. You saw a dolphin, a shark, a crab, a turtle. Um, let's pick up the turtle, because turtles are really cute. Your hand stopped on the sleeping turtle, just barely poking its head out of the shell. It had a flex of metallic green on its back that caught the sunlight when you picked it up. You remember the turtles you had seen in a movie. You had been mesmerized by the way they gently glided through the water. You were instantly enamored. Checking the price though, your heart fell. Six dollars. You didn't know much about money, but you thought that was a lot to spend on one thing. You rarely had more than a five dollar bill to your name. Is that what you want? Huh? Oh. It's six dollars. I didn't bring any money. Alright. Um, we'll say, are you sure? Cove took the keychain from your hands and that was that. He was holding a small yellow bucket for himself too. I was always going to get you something. I already got the money for it. You smiled, pleased to have things work out. It was nice of Cove's dad to let Cove buy something for you too. You had to remember to thank him next time you saw him. After Cove paid, the two of you stepped out of the store side by side, your balloon dolphins knocking together and spiraling around in the air. You watched Cove hold up his new pail to his face, examining it thoroughly. Hey, Cove. Yeah? Um, we'll say I really like this keychain. Thank you. It's nice. Cove looked further down the street where different food carts were lined up. He rested his non-cast arm over his stomach, and just as he did yours, let out a light growl. You hadn't eaten since breakfast, and after all this wandering around, you were definitely ready for some lunch. Let's get some food. Yeah. You two wandered around a short while looking at all the delicacies that were available. Everything looked delicious, as the different smells, both sweet and salty, wafted over to you. Your stomach growled even louder. After passing up hot dogs, snow cones, ice cream, and pizza, you both agreed on pretzels. Cove got something sweet and cinnamony. And you? Um, we Let's get one with cheese. You licked your lips hungrily as the vendor handed your pretzel over, ready to take a big bite. It was covered in gooey melted cheese, just the way you liked it. It seemed odd to get a dessert pretzel before eating normal food. You found an empty table close enough to the beach that the grit of the sand made terrible noises when you dragged the chairs out to sit down. These balloons are going to make it hard to eat. Cove placed his bucket on the table as he stared at his still balled up hand that was wrapped around the string. You opened your mouth to agree before an idea hit you. I know. After carefully placing your pretzel somewhere it wouldn't get sandy, you tucked the balloon dolphin out of Cove's hand and tied it in a delicate bow around his wrist. Oh. Cove bounced his arm up and down in place, testing the stability of your knot. After watching his balloon jostle around but remain attached, he smiled satisfied. Can you do it for me? He repeated the ritual. Cove struggled somewhat with the cast restricting his fingers on one hand and a string already tangled around the other. Okay. The two of you spent a moment admiring your handiwork, both hands now free to allow easy munching on your pretzels. You bit into the doughy treat, savoring the taste on your tongue with a smile as you looked out over the ocean. After a time you finished your pretzel, you were done before Cove. It was boring not having anything to do. You pulled on the string of your balloon to bring it down to your level, then you held the dolphin in your hands, manipulating it to make it look like it was jumping through the air. If you turned a face towards the beach, it almost looked like it was swimming in the waves like a real dolphin. A laugh came from your side. When you glanced back at Cove, he had left the remaining part of his pretzel on the wrapper and was gripping the dolphin too. Um, let's see. We'll say, Mine's name is Splash. They star in movies. Their trainers use fish and treats to help them perform tricks. They're the most famous dolphin in the world. You sighed, wishing you could star in a movie with a real-life dolphin. What's yours? Cove considered the question, placing the balloon against the table and resting his free arm across it in contemplation. It's... With a loud pop, the dolphin exploded into ribbons. Uh. Oh no. For a second, all Cove did was gape in shock like you. 
Then his cheeks puffed up, squinting his eyes, and he saw tears starting to glisten. Aster, it... Uh, let's see. We'll offer to give Cove our balloon. You looked at Cove, then up to your balloon, bobbing gently in the air above you. You can have mine. That was better than letting him cry more. Cove sniffled, glancing up the balloon, then back at you. <sighs> no, it's yours. I don't want to take it from you. It's okay, really. Cove shook his head. Even though it wasn't your fault, you felt bad. Still, the offer seemed to lift Cove's spirits, and that was good. The passing of Cove's balloon was the last major event of your adventure. In the end, the two of you headed back late that afternoon. You separated on the beach, and while Cove went straight home with his brand new sand pail in hand, you decided to sit for a while. You watched the waves and the sunset fiddling with your new keychain. Another summer day was drawing to a close. It had been a good one, except for the sad final note. Alright, I think that this is a really good place to stop after we finish that moment. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you like this game, please let me know. Have a lovely day.